Hey, it's Vanessa from CraftyGemini.com and I post weekly crafting and cooking videos here on YouTube. This week I'm back with block number five of our video quilt along, a hole in the barn door quilt block. Here's what the block looks like and sometimes it's called a hole in the barn door or a churn dash quilt block. So in this tutorial, I'm also gonna be teaching you guys how to sew with a scant quarter inch seam allowance. <laughs> So the first thing we want to do is take the four little squares that measure the same and you're going to match one of each of the different fabrics up. You're going to lay them together with the pretty sides touching. You can probably tell we're making half square triangles again. Pin one side, then take your ruler and draw a diagonal from one corner to the other. You can repeat that on the other block units as well. And then you're going to take it to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch a quarter inch to the right of that line and also to the left of that line. Then after you're done sewing, it should look something like this. We can now remove our pins, lay it back down on our cutting mat. You're going to lay your ruler right on the line that you traced out earlier and that's where you're going to slice it down the center. And when you open those two units up, you end up with two half square triangles. Give them both a good press with your iron. Remember to press those seams towards the darker fabric. Then of course we want to cut off these little dog ears. We want to have nice and clean edges on all our blocks. Now let's work with the two strips that we have. Remember your dark fabric strip should be narrower than the light fabric one. You're gonna layer one on top of the other with the pretty sides touching, place some pins along the long edge, and we're gonna be stitching these together with a quarter inch seam allowance. If you sew an exact quarter inch seam allowance, you may not realize it, but you may be actually going over a few little threads bigger than the quarter inch. And then on top of that, if you're using a thick cotton thread, you're gonna to have to account for that as well. What happens is that that little bit of extra, as it's compiled together to create the finished block across all these seams, it ends up taking away even more from the finished quilt block. So that's why you're ending up with a block that's not exactly the 12 and a half inches square that it should be. The solution for that problem is to sew scant quarter inch seam allowances. And what that means is that we're literally gonna sew just a few threads smaller than that exact quarter inch. So everything across all the little blocks you're sewing together can even itself out, and then you end up with a 12 and a half inch square block. If you're using a quarter inch foot on your sewing machine, I like to use a clear one because I can see right through it. That way I can just scoop my fabric in a little bit inside the presser foot and just guide it right through there and get my perfect scant quarter inch seam allowance. Now let me show you what I mean. So I've sewn these two strips together here using my scant quarter inch seam allowance. And you can see now when I place the ruler on top of the stitch line, we're gonna measure the seam allowance and you can see through the ruler that the edge of the fabric in the seam doesn't actually reach that quarter inch mark yet. You can still see a little space there and that's about two or three threads of the fabric smaller than the actual quarter inch measurement. So that's the scant quarter inch seam allowance and if you guys are having that problem, give this little solution a try and let me know how it works out for you. After sewing our strips together, we give it a good press with an iron and of course remember to press those seams towards the darker fabric. Now from this long strip, we need to cut four units that measure six and a half inches long. So I'm laying my ruler there and cutting the first one. And then you're gonna repeat this three more times to end up with four identical units and you will end up with some extra from your strip. I made you cut the strips longer because you might need to either trim off some off the edge and straighten it out or it's just always better to have more rather than less. So here are my four units. Now that you have all your pieces together, you can lay out your block diagram, put the largest square in the center and then arrange your half square triangles on the four corners with the darker fabric going towards the outside of the block and you can see it comes together real easy. And then we're just gonna fill it in with our rectangular strip pieces here, and you wanna have the lighter fabric going towards the inside. Once you're done laying out your pieces, we're gonna do what we usually do, and sew the top three pieces across, and then the second and the third row, and then we'll go ahead and sew the different rows together. So you can see I have my rows completed. The seams, remember to alternate them, to press them in alternating directions. 
and that's going to allow your little seams here to abut nicely. You can put your pins in there and then just go ahead and sew all three rows together using that scant quarter inch seam allowance. Now that you've finished your cute little block, set it aside and we're moving on to block number six pretty soon. I hope you guys will join in. If you're coming across a tutorial randomly, remember we're doing a video quilt along. You can click here on my hand and I'll send you to the playlist. You can watch all the videos and catch up. And don't forget to upload pictures of your completed blocks to our Facebook page. Everybody has been posting these great pictures. And if you don't know what fabrics to use or what colors, check out our Facebook page to get some inspiration from the blocks other people are making. See you guys next week with another tutorial.